welcome. Thanks for coming and listening. Uh, my name is uh, Vladko Kosturiak. I'm coming from Croatia, here, neighbor, neighborhood country, neighbor country. Uh, and I'm going to talk about wonderful world of distributed source code management or distributed version control systems and how they can help to actually open the closed source code. Well, not by some legal means, but I would say more uh, from attacker point of view. <clears throat> Usually what I do for a living is I'm a security consultant delivering secure, consult consultative services. And what I will cover to today is uh, actually first what I will not cover. I will not cover philosophical issues. Why that source code is closed? I don't care. Uh, that's something for some other people to discuss about. Uh, what I want to talk about today is about finding code uh, with old school source code management systems, let's say non-distributed, and also about new school source code management systems, that means distributed, in short. And, of course, how to take advantage of those systems to get the, to the source code or to the information that is stored on those repositories on source code management systems. There will be also question and answers uh, because we have plenty of time. They gave me like 75 minutes. So I will do the talk for five minutes and then I have some alcohol, some booze and uh, some sweets. So for the rest of the time, we can just enjoy the time. Um, everyone agrees or we should do the slides, long slides and uh, <coughs> alcohol later, later. Uh, in short, I, I have to put this disclaimer. So what, what I'm describing here is work of pure fiction. Um, Everything is virtual. Uh, if you are doing some actions mentioned here, that means you are aware of the morality of the story and also if it's lawful or unlawful in your country. So I don't take any responsibilities for your actions. Consider yourself for your actions, ethical, moral, legal, whatever. And it's really uh, everything is fictional, even me, so uh, I'm also virtual. So, <clears throat> anyone using here some kind of source code management system, versioning system? I guess everybody here. Me too, I'm also using uh, source code management, uh, actually not just for the source code, I'm using it for versioning of my configuration files, versioning of my dot files, uh, versioning of documents and so on. So I, I'm really fun of uh, having control of my versions. And it's really good. Uh, not just because of the versioning, because you can say, if you, if you have large software project, you can say, okay, could that, could that, uh, huh, let's say, this code looks bad, who done it? So you can blame it. That's a wonderful feature, right? Also, if you've done something wrong, you can revert it back. Uh, you can also collaborate with others, as we saw on open source software, of, uh, of course. Uh, it makes code review much easier because every uh, you can put the hook so every new commit comes to email and everybody can see what's happening with the source code. So it makes uh, code reviews much easier. Uh, also sign-offs together with the, with, with the code review, and also integration with other tools. So for example, once you commit uh, your source code, you can, for example, automate it that uh, code is automatically checked against some static analyzers, so you don't have any bugs or security vulnerabilities in the code. So it's really, really great. That's uh, the point, uh, but the problem is here, have you thought about security implications uh, once you start using it, especially for the web applications? So let's say the first rule. 
if it's sensitive, don't put it on the public web, right? That's the first rule, probably you know it. And don't put SCM file somewhere public or on the internet. And don't put sensitive parts in web root. I guess that's something you already know. So if you didn't do that, well, uh, once the cat is out of the bag, uh, I like the phrase or the quote which says, internet does not forget. So once you put the cat out of the bag, probably it's mirrored all around. Uh, we have one uh, case uh, where it happened when the cat get out of the bag. It's a pornographic movie with, with the actress uh, Severina, but probably you don't know everyone here. But that's a typical example of if you put cat out of the bag. Probably Kardashians here, like Kardashian porno is here. Worldwide example of that. So, <clears throat> in short, it's just you find some, uh, let's say, binary. You, you put the strings, command on that, and you just search for those strings. And it's quite interesting that you can find really nice uh, source code somewhere on the internet of the closed source software. This is really just plain Google uh, skills. So this is really simple. So I, I will not go further much into it. I guess it's self-explanatory. Uh, another thing, which is uh, also one of the simplest examples of the, let's say, simple error, where uh, <coughs> people put uh, configuration files into repositories. So the problem here is that if you put it uh, as a tracked file in any of uh, search code management you use, versioning system, uh, is that uh, dangerous. Why? Because you can ex accidentally commit, for example, your passwords of the production database or so on to the search code management system, which much more people have access than to what it should be, right? So I would dare to say that software.conf and then some name is much uh, safer or less dangerous than using the configuration name, <coughs> exact configuration name. But you still have the problems, of course. It's just less dangerous. That means that you, you still have to watch out wildcard. So if you commit so something like a wildcard star, then probably it will end up in the repository and then all the things which we will talk later in this presentation. So what you can do with this? So once the cat is out of the bag, for example, in, in this example, uh, well, if you put it somewhere, that, that code, that means that uh, someone can just search for the specific code and it will find on the internet that particular sensitive information. Of course, on the GitHub as well, and so on. So I, I can show you one of the examples here. So for example, here I was just searching on GitHub, mysql underscore connect, right? And here I just chose choose code, not, not the repositories. So here, for example, you can find a lot of mysql connect uh, uh, commands and with a lot of passwords and so on. So this is another way of finding nice username and passwords for your word list or password lists and so on. So it's really interesting. Once you put the cut out of the bag, it's really out. <coughs> so let's talk about the old school versioning systems. Of course, we will start with, with the history ones. Is anyone still using RCS? No. No one. So I guess uh, everyone used CVS at all through its, let's say, development time. Anyone using CVS still? No one. Subversion? Oh, we have much more. OK. I guess that will be much more interesting then. Uh, OK, so by old school versioning systems, I mean non-distributed versioning systems. So let's see what, what we can do with this. I will go quickly through CVS. Uh, I will not then uh, show the examples for CVS, since no one is actually using it anymore. 
But uh, it's quite interesting because a lot of BSDs still use CVS and a lot of other projects still use CVS, so uh, I guess people still are using it. Uh, but uh, I guess not as that as subversion, for example. So, <coughs> uh, what's the story about it? Well, if, if you have, for example, some project and usually it's no, nowadays uh, web projects and if you just uh, like check out it from, from the repository and put, put it on the document root of the web, uh, probably <coughs> uh, the, everyone who can connect to that web probably can access this one. So uh, what files it can find interesting? What files are interesting there? Well, these ones. The most interesting actually repository in root where you can find actually source of the, of the repository so you can actually see if it's internet accessible and if it's internet accessible you can try to, to get the source of the code. Well, you say, what fool will do that, right? Here is one of the Google Docs which says that about, there is like 530,000 results. <laughs> and this is just for uh, in, in what Google indexed, and there is much more which Google couldn't index because of uh, directory browsing disabled or it's forbidden for the robots and so on. So that number is probably much higher. So what can be extracted in, in this case for that simple old CVS? Well, you can extract a repository location. That's interesting. You can extract name of the hidden files. If there is any, anyone, uh, it's located in, in the entries file and then you can see uh, which files probably have some issues. And also repository user. So that's everything just enough if the repository is online for password guessing if online, brute forcing, whatever. So that's interesting, but uh, not so much, but I made some easy script which can help you actually to, if you found something like CVS, it will just extract all information you need for, uh, for example, for later brute force. So, what's the procedure? If there is any CVS located, you, you can just get the information with, with this script and then you can run like any other brute forces you have for uh, for CVS, in this case, I'm using Nmop, and of course, if you find the password, it's profit. You can get the source code. It's actually for CVS, it's not that interesting. I, I have to agree. So, what are the protection mechanisms here? Well, first, don't make it closed source, right? Make it open source if possible. Uh, well, another one which really works is remove SCM files if not needed. This really works. I tried it. <laughs> and also you, you can change web server configuration that it doesn't accept those files and doesn't serve actually those files. And you can also have like web deployment automation like controls which will automatically delete all those sensitive files from there like every directory which begins with CVS and just delete it, right? So let's go to much interesting ones to subversion. Well, subversion is also interesting in many ways, but the most interesting part is that you, all, you can also find repository source. You can find sensitive files, but you can also extract whole uh, latest uh, checkouted files, all. Of course, if they are, if they are still there. So if, if it's a really clean subversion, normal tree which somebody checked out, and probably you can get all the files, even if he deleted it uh, <coughs> on the file system, but if it's still subversion, whole subversion there, then you can get the files. So again, if you think there is no fools who will do this, well, the answer is 858,000, which Google is just indexed, probably then the number is higher, right? So what we can find in those files? The most interesting part uh, in subversion clients, which are <coughs> older clients, 
you can actually find interesting stuff. So that means you can find, of course, repository location, user, and so on, whatever is needed for brute forcing. But also you can find whole source. So you can really get the latest source there. Uh, <coughs> there is new format in, in subversion. Probably if, if you've done something uh, with, with newer version uh, subversion clients, then you will get the message, oh, sorry, I cannot work with these files anymore. It's old or, or it's newer, so please get a newer order subversion. Or you can just do SVN upgrade. Uh, the advantage of this is there is no SVN directories all around. So there is just a single SVN directory, just like it, in one directory for everything below that tree. Of course, it's different format, incompatible, but uh, there is, uh, since it's only located in one location, whole subversion, that means there is a SQLite database which is actually holds all the commit info. And that's quite nice. So what you can do with this, that means that you can actually extract all the files from the repository. In, in this first case, uh, in, in all the subversion clients, you, you had actually the problem when you had, for example, .php, .cvn base. Uh, this will just get uh, executed on the server side as, as a script. In this case, uh, in version uh, 1.6 and higher, this can actually, uh, it doesn't get executed since, since they are now using SHA-1, the same as Git. So that means it's much robust. You can really get the whole tree. If it's newer subversion, so there's no more problem extracting interpreted files, like PHP, but any other which web server have. Therefore, it's much easier, much faster, and I would say thank you, subversion developers, because it's, uh, if somebody puts that uh, subversion tree, you can get the whole source uh, without any problems. So, let's see how it looks like. Okay, this is subversion. Let's say you have some, usually you come to the website and usually you get some kind of login password. Uh, so, usually you probably you try something like this, right? Well, it doesn't work. Someone who is more profound with, with the security of web application security probably will do something like this. Maybe it will work, right? Ah, oh, bummer, it doesn't work. So let's say that a developer spent quite some time filtering out input, output, and so on, and everything works. But there is something interesting. If you put something like this, you will get the subversion. So probably he is, he's using subversion repository for web applications, right? In this case, this is older version of subversion, just to show you the, the problems uh, of the older version. And you can find all those, for example, entries. Uh, this is actually location, this is just for test, location of the subversion and so on. But I'll be much more interested, actually, just. I'll be much more interested in into having the source of, of this web application, or at least some kind of configuration, right? So, I can do the manually, uh, try to go to the text base and look at, at this one, but this will execute again. This is the, the problem I'm, I'm talking about with, with the older subversion clients. So if you check out it with the older subversion clients, this will get executed. Uh, and you don't also have, like, you can go to the entries file, see that there is some conf dir, so you can go to the conf dir, right? Or oh, there is some, something directory browsing is on, so you can actually see the, see the source, and then you can download this one. So, this is one of the examples where actually subversion can help you in, in seeing this one. But in actually finding all those 
uh, subversion files scattered all around the web root. It's kind of boring. So scripts come to the rescue. Let's just copy the, the web root. Uh, what I actually is doing is using uh, the script, which is actually I have it on my GitHub account. You have it also. It's public. I just made the last commit, updated it last night, uh, and it will actually help you in getting all those scattered files on subversion uh, <coughs> and get you the clean subversion tree. And it will also do the checkout for you on the end. So it says like, oh, I found all SVN client storage format. And this is the problem I'm talking to. Uh, the problem is here that index.php gets executed, right? Uh, so you have to run it a few times to actually get it. So now you, you have actually all the files which are on the subversion repository. You can find this one, for example. Six. And so on. But the problem is, for example, if configuration file is in PHP file, it will just get executed. Uh, newer versions of subversion have that new format, which, which can actually help you. And this script will, uh, is also supporting the new format, and it will extract even those files. So. Finding the subversion is quite interesting. So please use newer version of subversion. <laughs> so what, what is protection here? Well, yeah, make it open source. Don't commit sensitive files. Uh, make a web server configuration for bit or uh, just doesn't serve those sensitive files and make the web deployment automation controlled, so which I talked already. So it's the same recommendation as for CVS. So how it actually looks like. If you have access to the, for example, main configuration file of Apache, for example, you, you can use NGNX, whatever. This is just uh, what you have to put, just example. Uh, so if you want to send back like uh, forbidden, then you just say, OK, if di directory match, this one just denied and don't serve that's a SVN files from salt uh, on one layer. Uh, I will definitely recommend having more controls. So this one is one control. The other one is like uh, having uh, regular checking, for example, with wget if somebody can really get it or not. Or if you want to say just not found, just uh, go somewhere else and find something, uh, you can use alias match. So you don't need anything for this. It's, it's located in Apache. Uh, but if you don't have, for example, access to, to main configuration files that's usually on the shared hosting and such environments, you can probably use htaccess. But this, then you cannot use the, those directives which I mentioned. So you have to use modri write and then write like one of these examples which I put here. Uh, how you can actually protect from, even if you have those files, that it doesn't get served at all. OK, so let's go to the new school. It's becoming interesting. Uh, distributed source code management systems. Uh, by, let's, let's say new school, we are saying about, I'm actually saying about distributed. This is about the Git, Mercurial, Bazaar, and all those bell and whistles which you usually find nowadays the developers are using. So again, you can really find a lot of uh, Git files. Somebody put on the purpose, somebody did not. But again, there is a large number of sites which you can just find with the go. So if directory browsing is enabled, as you saw, it's really easy. You just get, you can use wget, get the source, 
get files and then just go to that directory and you can say just git reset hard and that's it. Like, it's really easy. Well, the problem here is actually when directory browsing is disabled. It's also a problem with, with the subversion and all other clients. Then it's much harder actually to, <coughs> to guess all those things. Let's see. Let's go to git. Uh, so here, if, if directory browsing is not disabled, it's quite easy. Okay, I can see the config. I can even look at the commits, right? So it's here, initially import, password change, bug fix, blah, blah, and so on. So it's quite easy, right? And you can also find all those objects and references because it's, you know. But the problem here is actually, <coughs> What if you disable? So if you disable it, well, we have problem, right? We can go logs, heads, we can go to objects, but we need to guess the SHA-1 of, of the file and sometimes it can be pretty hard, right? I guess you will agree with me. Well, there is many ways, right? You can maybe try to find the archive of, of, of those extracted source. You can try to brute force SHA-1, but it's really like time consuming, bandit consuming. Uh, computing power consuming. Uh, you can actually find some partial SHA-1 which are visible, but they are not all. Uh, in all different files there. And it's really, the repository is really there. There must be the way, right? So in, in this stage, I go, I'm usually go to the zombie mode. You know, you know it's there, you want it, but uh, something is on your way. So, I must get a source, and actually what I found is uh, Adam Baldwin made some tool called DVC DVCS Pillage. Uh, it will actually rip the git files when directory browsing is disabled. He actually had a talk uh, <coughs> last Black Hat uh, last year about pillaging those gits. And it's actually accessible from URL, this one, on the GitHub. But it actually has a few problems. Well, <coughs> what he's using is he's trying to uh, get from all those scattered around files all the SHA ones he can find and then trying to download and then trying to <coughs> reset hard and find the files which are missing and then again uh, when uh, <coughs> git reports what file is missing, trying to download that file, that, that SHA-1 and so on and so on. And, and it's really uh, time consuming as well. And there is no support for branches, no support for other protocols than HTTP. For example, HTTPS is not supported. And it's really slow because every time it calls git, once it downloads new objects and it finds some <coughs> It finds some SHA-1 and then again, oh, okay, let's try to, to get whole tree. Oh no, it's not. And there is also a problem with the packed references uh, and so on. And it's really, really, really slow and you actually don't get the whole tree. <coughs> Usually, uh, in simpler cases, you get the whole tree, but uh, <coughs> if it's more complex source, probably you will not get the whole tree. But usually, uh, the most interesting part is usually <coughs> not there. <laughs> and then you say, um, I want the whole tree, damn it. I want the files, I want, uh, if there is, I want to see if there is any other branches. Uh, I also want to support other protocols and so on. But I still don't want to brute force, it's, it's really long. So again, yeah, zombie mode, what can I do? Uh, searching around, must get the full source, how can I do it? 
asking around and so on. And actually, I talked also uh, with Adam, and uh, he said, sorry, I, I don't know anyway how to get the whole source. So, yeah, I went to the driving board, back to the driving board, started uh, looking at the sources, uh, reading manuals, and so on. And actually, the solution is quite easy if you read the documentation. You can actually call git fsk, <laughs> which is actually like file system checker for, for the file system, but this time it, it will check the git repository and it will tell you what SHA ones are missing. And it's quite easy. So <clears throat> there's no partial recovery. You, you get really the so whole source code from whole git tree, and it's quite neat. So th that was the time I went to code my own tool because I wanted the whole tree. Uh, I want to support branches, uh, all protocols, and I want to be it really fast because the usually Git trees can be very, very big. So I came up with, with the DVCS rip. Uh, it will rip the Git files even when directory browsing is, is disabled and it will get the all whole tree. So there's not partial and so on, and it supports everything what I mentioned, what I want. So branches, any protocol. Uh, so <clears throat> everything what I wanted, it's, it's now there. And you can actually get it from, from here. Uh, and I actually extended to actually support like CVS, SVN, and so on, and have all other methods inside. What, <clears throat> what I found, the others are using, but also these new methods, which I found so for subversion and also for Git. So, how do you run it? Well, it's quite easy. You just say uh, URL and it will actually automatically download whole git tree and it will do automatically for you git checkout and so on if you just get the tree. And you actually profit. So, let, let me show you. <coughs> So we have here, as we saw, the objects and so on. We have we have found the git here. Well, you, you cannot actually say git clone here, right? You are aware of this, so this doesn't work. You can try it. Once the directory browsing is disabled, it doesn't work. I like verbose, and this one. So it's verbose, so it will report all the things it, it got. And actually, you can see you get the whole tree, even those that that wasn't available. For example, in CVN, this config was available, for, but for example, this one, secret PHP wasn't right. But this time it's available in the Git because uh, <coughs> the extensions, there is no extensions, but they are using just the SHA ones. SHA one is a file name. So it's quite neat and you can get actually the whole tree. It's actually good not just finding the sensitive files, it's actually good for finding all the flaws. Once you get the source, you can actually check the source code for the flaws, right? So it's kind of good one. Protection, well, it's the same as the last one. Just uh, remove it if you don't need it. Make the web server configuration so nobody can get the Git files and so on. So it's same. I just changed SVN files to, to Git and that's it. And it's same if you have problems uh, accessing the main configuration file, you can have the in the Apache using what you write and it actually helps uh, in protecting <coughs> the, the git files. So probably you're asking now, how about the others, right? Is there any, <coughs> uh, Mercurial or Basra any better? Well, they are not. You can still get the whole source and so on. The, the methods are even quite easier. Uh, you can just check out uh, DVCS pillage from Adam and it will handle age 
and uh, it will handle Git, Mercurial, and Buzzer, and you can find it on this URL. Uh, the problem is here is also that there is no tool available to detect. Uh, that's why there is no awareness about this problem. Uh, the problem is that, uh, for example, let me show you this one. Let me just move this index PHP in one, and let me enable. Okay. So even if directory browsing is enabled, you will not see the .dot .git file that it's exposed. Uh, so you have to really like type it, right? So this kind of there is no awareness also, but also a lot of tools, which are like web vulnerability scanners, uh, passive vulnerability scanners, whatever. Uh, they are only looking for that .git file, not actually the files inside, and therefore all those when directory browsing is not enabled, it will not find. They should actually look at the files, like these ones which I, which I told, which I showed here, right? Uh, you have actually NumaP NSE, which can help and come to the rescue to find this, but you have to use latest NMAP versions. Uh, script, for example, if you're using some older versions, it's not in 6.01. Uh, it was broken in some previous NMAP versions, so it didn't work and so on, but now it's working. And it actually looks all relevant, for example, Git files. And uh, this is the typical output and how you will run it and how you will get the results. <coughs> so you can actually, this is one of the other security controls which you can use to check that there is no, like, those files lying on your web server if you don't want it, right? Somebody just want to open and that's it. Uh, also, um, I, I'm in contact with Adam, and he also liked the methods which I've done. And he also some of those tricks implemented in his tool. So I would say this is one of the good examples of open source collaboration, uh, because there is no competition, and we exchange ideas and so on. So it's quite good being in open source community. What else can be done is demonstrated this, this year in, in Vegas on B-Sites and DEF CON, uh, where Movix and Vic actually crawled whole GitHub to actually get all those like uh, things nice for brute force, username, passwords, uh, default salts, uh, actually static salts, let's say that way, and also <coughs> all the files. So you, for example, if you want to brute force the name of the files, for example, for uh, for the files on, on the uh, root, uh, on uh, doc document root, and so on. So it's kind of interesting project where you can actually get the data and use it for, I don't know, brute forcing the files, brute forcing uh, usernames, passwords, and so on. So kind of interesting project. <coughs> so these are, for example, Google Docs, which usually can be used to actually find those problems, but only on indexed, uh, only on uh, which Google indexed the sites. If he didn't index the site, then yeah, it's not there, but uh, it's still possible that there is. But I guess you got the idea already how it's done. Uh, another way uh, of finding those source code files is searching for standard interfaces. What usually <coughs> is used, for example, Redmine, UCS, GitWeb, and so on. So one of the Google Docs can be like powered by VUCS, and you can use Bing as well, and so on. And it just to give you an idea how <coughs> the widespread problem is. So what are recommendations for developers? Well, don't store passwords and API keys in NCM. Uh, don't store sensitive info as well separate test and production data, and being paranoid is a good feeling. And for system administrators, I would say proactively forbid serving all the SCM files on, on web servers. So you can put all those 
configuration directives, for example, for Apache, which I showed. Uh, you can also like uh, wget and check if, if there is some periodic checks and so on. And ask yourself, is there any need to have source code available at all there or not? And this is for management and auditors, right? Some of the recommendations. Well, what to ask? How source code management is done? What security controls are there to protect actually that source code if it's sensitive? Uh, what controls are there to protect passwords and key leaks and sensitive information in source code and configuration? These are all good questions actually to ask if you're management auditors to actually if you don't want that that happen to you, probably you want to ask it. And these are some links <coughs> which I mentioned in talk. More or less, they are all here. There are some tools uh, which are working more or less, but uh, I would say uh, I'm using all known methods plus some new newly discovered methods to actually extract all three. So you want to check out all of these and probably my script, which is now working with all methods. So here. So far, we've seen, I guess, uh, how to pack uh, source code uh, repository, which is uh, uh, partially uh, accessible. Uh, I mean, if I were to expose or share my Git or SVM uh, repository to the members of my team who are distributed all over the world, First thing I would do is put uh, a set of username and password on Apache uh, server to actually uh, get the location itself. I would not rely on uh, disabling the directory browsing. So, uh, is this something that you have probably seen as uh, uh, the tools that are available as GitHub? They give you partial protection of the repository. So let me just uh, check if, if I get the question right. You are asking uh, uh, if there's any tool which can help you to secure no, the repository they, itself. What I'm saying is that all these examples will not work if I get my hands on the Apache server and say uh, uh, at allow access only to all things. Yeah, sure. Uh, like I said, if I get my hands on the Apache server and set up in the configuration of that directory and the repository store is uh, uh, <laughs> uh, there's a secret switch. Yeah, now. Uh, now it's working. So um, uh, these tools, as far as I can tell, uh, work uh, in case uh, the Apache or any other uh, web server will uh, allow you to access the file, right? Uh, in providing that you uh, know the path. And your tools are trying to guess or cal calculate or extract the paths right from some of the files so if i if i were to take the the web server and say okay from this location downwards you need to be an authenticated user these tools uh, will, will, would not work yes yes of course uh, so the question was that uh, if if you put it the uh, like Apache, uh, Apache uh, like directive to not not allow this file yes. to be served. Yes, which which I showed as well. Uh, these tools will not help. Yes, of course, this tool will not help. But what usually web developers develop uh, deployment is they just check out the source at the location of the document root and serve the files. Mm -hmm. This is. What I found in most of my audits and uh, pen tests uh, is that usually they just check out the source code from the SEM, whatever it is, to the document root. 
Yes, but from, from my point of view, then the, uh, the administrator who is creating the shared uh, location is the one to blame, right? Because he or she failed to uh, protect the resource, which is definitely accessible from the net. Yeah, but uh, how he could know what, what they are using from the, from the uh, for SCMs and so on? So I guess it, I would say it's lack of communication between developers and system administrators. If mm -hmm. developers would say, okay, we will use this and we'll just check out and this is our method of deployment, then probably system administrators will yeah. do something like this because he's worried as well as developers. Yeah, so, uh, I wouldn't we, we, play one, one another side. I would say it's lack of communication mostly what I saw. Well, I mean, when you... The, depending on the organization, yeah, maybe it's... When you did the right. Google search, the number of the results is uh, staggering. I mean, there's too many Git and SVN uh, repositories which are basically freely available for you to rip or for you to just go in. Okay, if it's a really open source repository, cool. But if those are somewhat uh, partially uh, proprietary uh, uh, projects, then I would say those people don't know anything about security. Well, yeah, that's why we are here to help. I mean, uh, internally in our company, we are uh, outsourcing company and we have uh, something like uh, 30, 40 teams. Each team has to has a different, uh, actually the access to the SVN repository per team is regulated by a membership of that user to the active uh, di directory uh, group. So if you're not a member of the team, you cannot uh, check out the code, although that server is visible only from the inside. Yeah, th that's fine. Usually you can say that those, get those repositories are probably internal. But once uh, it depends on the deployment process, how you deploy actually from that SCM to the production. So if you just do the clone, you just clone the repository there and you just use it, then probably if you didn't do some security controls, implementation of some security controls, you're vulnerable, right? Uh, it all depends how your deployment works. Yeah, that's right? true. So what your... This, this is more like Eticon not on the repositories where they are located, it's more uh, attack on uh, deployment process and it's usually like just check out things. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, but from so my from point of view, the deployment process should be check out internally, build, make packages and then distribute packages using whatever package distribution uh, mechanism is uh, in, inside your company, right? Uh, yeah. RPMs or what, 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 whatever you're using. So uh, allowing uh, external party to access the uh, subversion or whatever to build, uh, that's not how I would do it. So again, I say that it's, it's a failure of the pro process. Somebody did not think. Yeah, yeah I would agree. <laughs> and I hope that after your uh, uh, presentation, uh, at least couple of more people will think. Yeah, I hope as well. That's why I made this. Uh, and I also have for the first question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs> okay, anybody else? Come on, I have a whole bottle. <laughs> The question was uh, in what language it was written, and the answer is Perl, of course. <laughs> uh, it just, it was for me the most easiest language to write this. 
uh, I don't have any problems with any other language, so it's not like uh, my friends. Actually, one of my friends called me like uh, uh, I wouldn't say how you say. Because uh, uh, there's so many women. How do Ne, 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 ne. Ne, 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 ne. Ne mogu se sad cijetiti, ali uglavnom... Molim? Ne, ne, ne. Ne, 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 nego... Sjetit ću se, sjetit ću se. Evo, moram popiti da se sjetim. Živo je. HTTP Git is done by Alex Weber and Ron Bowes. He helped me. Uh, yes, I show you. Oh, yeah. Promiscuitet. So, they obviously we can say, but you can't prove it. Lucky to be. Oh, I started. Oh, I beat Ovaj, da sam formalno iskuitetan što se tiče programskih jezika, pa sad ovaj, stvarno nemam nekih opcija kojim što jeziku biti, ali Perl mi se čini najlakši u ovom slučaju, u kratku. E sad vi to meni prevedite. <laughs> Any other question? Come on, I have whole bottle. I have sweets as well. Yeah, I will not eat them. I guess we have Orakia workshop later, right? So, uh, but you can have a good foundation for the workshop. So, please be my guest. Oh, wonderful! We have another one. You just ask. I'll, I'll pour the <coughs> booze inside. Yeah, please. Okay, this is the question was. Where is this from? This one is not actually Rakia, but it's actually Maraskino and it's from Zadar, Croatia. So I brought it with me. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Big question. <laughs> because I see you, you don't ask too much questions, so I... <laughs> I'll start drinking from the bottle if you don't ask. Anyone? Come on. Okay, then, thank you for listening. Uh, thanks, organizer, for inviting me. And feel free to come even if you didn't ask questions. I have a lot of these. So, uh, so those who ask questions got the first. And now you can get it. Thanks. Thanks a lot.